Hello everyone, Perry here with another Sundance 2019 interview brought to you by the Kia Telluride. Huge thanks to them for making all this happen because we love talking movies and this one is a special one. It's Love and Tasha. It's a documentary about Anton Yelchin's life and I will tell you guys right now, I have always been a huge fan of his and I'm very grateful that we have this and we have this behind the scenes look at his passion and his career. So. Thank you for making it, and Welcome. thank you for being here. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us. I was wondering when the idea came up to first tell his story through the documentary format. Was it from you? Was it his his family that maybe brought it up? It's, it's okay. Uh, I'll start this. Um, <laughs> it's a long story. But you kind of mm-hmm. started it. So, so basically... We have two hours, remember? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So after Anton passed away, um, his parents just started gathering archival material, interviews, um, Letters, all their journals, all the footage that they shot, videos, of as a everything, kid. with the hopes of one day they maybe making a documentary. They just didn't know, you know, just just archiving basically. And then they get to a point where I think they were ready to hand over to a filmmaker, and they reached out to Drake because of how close he was with Anton, and he'd stay close with the family. Um, and to Drake's credit, he felt himself too close to the story, the subject too. So basically, reached out to me and introduced me to the Elchins and thought I could give an objective story to Anton and some, make something authentic and truthful, and that's the way he would have wanted it. And Garrett's an editor by yes. trade, so, and yeah. we went to film school together 17 years yeah. ago at AFI, and this is his first directorial debut. He directed and edited the film, and it's got such a singular voice, and I think what's mm-hmm. so amazing about the Elchins is they really allowed Garrett and this process to be completely uncompromised, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. a very yeah. truthful honest yeah. portrait. It's not a glossed over no. run of the mill documentary. It's a very unique film and I right. think that's a credit to the Elchids and to Garrett yeah. for, for finding his voice in the film as a director for the first time. You definitely yeah. feel it. In putting together all of the footage that you guys have, did you ever play around with the format at all or did you always want to go step by step through his life and I, career? I, I wanted to tell a coming of age story because Anton grew up in the movies and that's... That is what it feels, like. What it feels like. I didn't know how to describe it yeah, before but that's, that's what this is. The, it's a coming of age documentary. The, the first thing I saw was that little journal he wrote about his first kiss during Hearts of Atlantis and I was like this is a coming of age story and then him getting drunk during Alpha Dog I mean these all these things you experience at, from a child to a teenager he was doing it for the love of his craft which mm-hmm. I just latched onto and I was like this story has to be told why why did you choose this for your feature directorial debut did something I, feel right for you with this it, there was so much material and as an editor it's I mean, it's a blessing, you know, it's a treasure trove of stuff to work with. So as I started digging in, I started discovering the effect he had on people through his life. I was, I wanted to make a movie how I felt when I discovered Anton through this, because I didn't know Anton personally. Um, I knew him through Drake's movie, the Star Trek roles, but I, I was just mesmerized by what a complex and multifaceted and you know, layered human he was. And I think a lot of people would be really surprised. Yeah. <laughs> he was a musician, photographer, uh, I mean, it just there's so many facets to his creativity. It was just uh, uh, sprawling, so sprawling. So it's like I think a lot of people are going to be very shocked and, and and surprised to learn a lot of things they just had no idea about. Right. I had interviewed him a few times, and I got certain vibes from him that yeah. made me think I knew a little bit about who he was behind the scenes, but not nearly to the extent yeah. that you guys show us in this uh, in this film here. But the other thing was just how into film he was and how Oof. passionate he was and how you show how his passion influenced others and especially I don't know sitting here at Sundance of all places where it's about celebrating filmmakers right. and the craft it feels really important that this movie is premiering yeah, here very much so very much so I mean there's no other place in the world this movie could have premiered or should have premiered and it's so special that 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 this is Anton's last film at Sundance I mean it's just so surreal and emotional and important and hopefully really inspiring. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people think and are worried the movie's sad, but at the end of the day, it's not. It's a really inspiring tale about creativity mm-hmm. and about artistry and about chaos and about your own demons and things like that. And anyone who's ever created anything, I think, can relate yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. And, and living life to its fullest, because yeah. he is the definition Absolutely. of living life to its fullest. Admittedly, I walked into it a little nervous that yeah. I was going to be course. kind of emotionally <laughs> overwhelmed. But very I, much. I was, but not in the way that I right. thought I would be. And that's how we want to frame it for audiences yeah. going in very much so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice touch. And yeah. it kind of leads into another question that I wanted to ask you guys. His passing wasn't all that long ago, so why now for something like this? And why do you feel like yeah. the docu- documentary format is, I guess, needed to share right. his story? Why now? I, I think Martin Landau in our film actually says it best. We live in a very fast world now. 
and he just doesn't want to be forgotten. And that's kind of the mantra I took through this. And we made it fairly quickly too. We just wanted to get out, get it out there. Um, I think, and your second question, I think people are just looking for real authentic stories in this world now. You know, I think, uh, especially when it comes to portraits of people, people they can relate to and latch on to. And I think that's why there is this sudden surge. Authentic and inspiring. Right. And you Absolutely. took both those boxes here. I wanted to hear a little bit about your collaboration on this because you've worked together before, but yep. now you're in the director's chair. So yeah. is there anything <laughs> you, you discovered about each other in a terms lot. of being filmmakers that surprised you? I, I think we've learned a lot about each other and how to push each other to make each other better and how to grow and how to learn. I mean, we met 17 years ago at AFI uh, and um, yeah. you know, been working together on and off over the years and different projects, different things like that. And he's cut a lot of great documentaries and done a lot of different things. I went and did a lot of different things. And then this project kind of brought us back together and was the yeah. perfect thing. And then now we're, he's editing my new movie right now that we're in the middle of, of working on. So it's just kind of a really fun thing. It's not about you know, who's right or who's wrong or whose job is what. It's more about just trying to make the best film possible and collaborate in a really free form way. And be fucking honest with each other yep. that's the best part of our relationship it's like there isn't after 17 years there's just nothing we can't say right. or feel it, honestly, there's no it, kid gloves ever and, and you want that in a collaborator more than anything 100%. i mean and it, it's funny i don't think a day goes by where we don't talk about anton and his project he's always Every with day. us and i think through this project i think everything we make and just thinking about how like how do we dig deeper the way he would have dug exactly deeper. well that's, that's the thing i think i walked away with more so yeah. than anything especially being in not the same side of the industry but still being a part of it is yeah. you know looking at certain movies a specific way and thinking you know how would he analyze right. it in a way that I might not? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great That's a great it was, it was thing to say. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really nice touch. Um, yeah. You were talking about the wealth of footage and material that yeah. you got from his family. So I imagine it's not the longest documentary in the world. You can't include any, everything oh there. So is there anything <laughs> yeah. that came out of the final cut that you still want people to know about or maybe I, I, experience on a DVD or Blu-ray down the line? I mean, yeah, a little bit digger, deeper into his music. I, we have I made a couple of little sequences about so music, his art. That, There's so many interviews that are amazing that we just couldn't fit in. You know, so it, many people wanted to be a part of it, but uh, ultimately, the, the yeah, end of the day, sixty plus interviews in the end, and everybody was just jumping to be a part of it and share their stories and talk about his life and how they affected him and how I mean, just everybody in the film, their lives were just completely changed mm -hmm. by him. It was yeah. like he, anytime he came into your life, he, he would just change you forever. He was just that kind of special right. soul. And, and, whether they're in professional life or personal life, everyone was the same to Anton mm -hmm. also, which I loved also. I mean, I even from onto. this perspective, sitting down and, I mean, you guys must know right. how it is to do these interviews right. over and over. And when you, you talk to someone and you feel that genuine passion right. and drive and they want to be there celebrating what they worked on, right. it sticks with you. And mm -hmm. he had that effect on people. Okay. Um, for the process of accumulating all of your interviews, how do you come up with that list? Do you sit down and, and jot down all the people he's worked with and then just go through that's them? That's Victor, that's his parents. They, you know, they were key in getting these interviews. And I think that's why, because of their involvement in this, even though they gave us complete autonomy to tell a story, the subjects knowing that their involvement, I think that's why we got such unguarded and authentic and truthful interviews. It's interviews I don't think you see a lot of times mm -hmm. in films like and they're this. they're so honest. They're so honest. There's so many right. stories that you maybe would be like slightly inappropriate, but that was Anton's life. He had a dark side. He had a very, yeah. he had a very uh, you know, sexual side, which is which is expressed in the movie as well, which I think is so cool and interesting that you don't normally see. Yeah. How was it? Uh, how was it working with his parents? Because thus far, it does sound like they were very excited about this project, very collaborative. Did you get? To sit down with them early on and just understand what they wanted to get out of this documentary, both for themselves personally, but also in terms of his it, legacy. I don't think there's anything personal about it for them. They just want his legacy to go on, honestly. Mm -hmm. And this is a tool for them to have and to spread the gospel of Anton and keep him alive because he's alive with them. And it's great. And I love it. I go, and I'd love we'd give them something to do this. You know, to do. It's very special. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just I can't imagine losing a child and in the uh, what what that in I mean I can't even imagine that but you know the fact that this is something that they're going to be able to spend hopefully a year mm -hmm. going around the world and talking about him at different film festivals or different different events where we can screen the movie and you know the every dime the movie makes goes towards his foundation for cystic fibrosis and and uh, all of his artwork and music and all those things all just kind of rolled into one and just continuing to help others while also spreading the word about how inspiring he was. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so many fans of his are going to go out and see this movie because of having seen his work. But 
I'm kind of hoping that they also bring people who right. aren't familiar with yes, his films. Yes, and that's very important. I, this this is basically like a you know a snapshot of his filmography, right. and it could most certainly inspire people to seek out his work. Absolutely. Now. I, yeah. I, I think one of these things. I just don't want to be defined by the way he passed away. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people know that, and, that and there's so the much about. more to him. You know, mm -hmm. it's such a small part of this. It's a film about life, and it really and, and people need to know the life he lived. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, Speaking of his impression on the two of you, you just brought up the project you're working on together, and I was wondering, during that process, that's still ongoing actually, is there anything that you guys found yourselves doing specifically that came through your relationship with Anton, or your experience just making the movie about him? I mean, every day. I mean, um, you know, all of my films are improvised, and Anton's an incredible improviser, and he's, he's so amazing in, in my film, I think, and, um, you know, I learned so much from him about how, how to approach the process and how to become friends. I mean, we became such close friends. And, and now, because of that, I feel like I seek out to become close friends with all the people in my films and to maintain those relationships and how important those relationships are. It's not just about executing a film or an idea. It's about the exploration together as human beings. And then that funnels its way into the work. And that's what I learned from him the most. And that's why in our film now, I became very close with my cast, uh, Shailene Woodley, Sebastian yes. Stan, and, and um, it's just like, um, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the purpose. It's the purpose. It's to, it's to infect each other's lives in such a positive way and challenge each other and to learn and grow. And that's what Anton did for me, and that's what I put into every day of what I do now. So true. It's like a little bit of the, the film school vibe, too. It's, it's, it is. It's, it's just making, getting together with it's your friends. It's making movies with friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. what it is. And like that's, it's, it's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's uh yeah that's a really nice touch to any movie. I mean you you pour so much time and your life and your soul and your energy and your creativity into something and I don't understand why anyone would walk on a set and take it as work like right. you're going to your like no you're that's, going to make a movie totally. with your family yeah. for a little and while. And that's what's so special about Anton too is he he had so much fun doing it and everybody whether you were the DP or you were a crafty or a PA you were laughing with him all day. And then we'd go do the work, and it's so serious. But it's like he, he would just, he, his laugh and, and, and the amount of fun he had and you know, making, f making fun of himself and situations and everything. I mean, he just, he just had so much fun with it. Yeah. I think we, that's why we have pretty much levity in your film. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think, what would Anton say? Well, yeah, yeah I mean, I Anton was so funny. I mean, yeah. he was just so funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With everybody you interviewed, because you're talking about how he influenced everyone out there, we see a lot of his very recognizable co-stars, but did anybody kind of come out and reach out to you that wanted to be a part of this documentary that maybe caught you by surprise a little? I, I don't... I mean, the gas station attended <laughs> yeah, I, I think everyone was just waiting to be asked, I think, honestly. And in the moment they were, they were a part of it. They were, they were in. Um, and then, you know, the biggest get in the end when we started framing this was Nick Cage to do his... Yeah. You know, to read his words. and Because there were kindred spirits in many ways and the idea that Anton would have made a lot of similar choices yeah. that, that Nick made in his career and would be in that place mm -hmm. is just yeah. kind of perfect. It's a perfect yeah. match. And As we wind down here, I kind of told you a little bit about what I took from this, but just to, in your own words, for anybody yeah. out there who comes across this documentary, what do you hope they walk away from Love and Tasha with? You're going to feel inspired, I think, and that's the I truth. Think, I think we also talk about, like, calling your parents. Yeah, Tell yeah, them well, you love that them. too. I mean, you know, it's such a love letter to his parents and their relationship and reaching out to the people that you love and that are important in your life and spending meaningful time with them and what that means and digging deeper into, into everything that you do and why you do it and searching. Oh, I, I would go home every day and look at my children and be like, why aren't you guys that treating me like the way Anton treats his mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... that's well, yeah. thank you guys so much for taking your time to come in here. Thank to you, and th Thanks. Thank you for making this movie because, Thanks, again, Gary. it was important to me as a Good. fan of his, and I imagine it's important to many other people out there who had all sorts of relationships with him. So thank, thank you, you guys. for taking Thanks, the time Gary. to watch it. Thank you, everybody, for watching this interview. Please like and share it. Another thank you to Kia Telluride for helping make this happen. We will have more Sundance 2019 coverage for you real soon.